Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Mountain Murders Midweek. I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. I thought you were going to open with Hello, Govna, because you said we hadn't offended our European listeners in a while. Oh, you, okay. So here we go. Hello, Govna. I said we haven't offended anybody across the pond any anytime lately uh, with our horrible attempts at their accents. I feel like you're just impersonating Dick Van Dyke as the chimney sweep in the Alice in Wonderland. Maybe that's all I've been exposed to for the most part. That and guy, um, was well, a Guy Ritchie movies, right? I'm just, I'm not even sure if it was Dick Van Dyke and Alice in Wonderland playing the um, chimney sweep, the little lizard. Um, but at the same time, I was going to follow that up with, we love the UK and we love Europe, and can we come stay with y'all for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we real? have some European listeners, and um, I'm I'm just hoping that you guys will give us a place to crash because we need to get out of Dodge. I don't know what's going on. We just need a in our country six year vacay. We're ready to become expats. Yeah, we love it, but you know, at a certain point when everything around you is on fire, you gotta find safety somewhere. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, I'm I'm really hoping for a beach sanctuary, Dylan. Okay. Okay. So my long term goal is. That we um, immigrate to Belize. Ah, oh, I was thinking the French Riviera. Or I just that need like people? a, it's like probably too rich for our blood, but you know, Belize is beautiful. Okay. Right? Beachy and um, seems affordable. Does our collapsing dollar go a long way there right now? Possibly. At the moment? Yeah. I mean, at, at this point, I don't even know. We're all poor. Okay. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, I'll wrap this up. Uh, we love you guys. And I was just kidding about the L.O. governor because you're awesome. All right. Okay. And we love all the Americans, too. We want to go to, you know, everybody lets us grow a garden together or something, right? Yeah, we need <laughs> we need communal living. Oh, Lord. I'm ready to start, like, a hippie commune. Maybe not, like, Manson-esque. Right. Right? Because I don't want to, like, kill people. No. But I like the idea of, like, let's all just join together. Buy some property, grow mm -hmm. some vegetables. So a nice communal co-op situation. Yeah, no shipbirds. Um, no. No shipbirds allowed. No, we all stand together and repel the shipbirds, expel the shipbirds, and we have the barter system, right? I can put up a fence, and I can do a little fence, and you can give me some squash. Okay. All right? I love sure. it. Sure, yeah. I could live in this. I like I'm not sure what I bring to the table, Dylan. Oh, you can do all kinds of things. You can research things for people very thoroughly, right? I don't know if that's really a skill that we're going to need in my commune. Well, uh, you know what? What you do is you warm your way in, you get in there, and then you start a commune-based podcast Okay. for the commune, and now well, you got a job. So I can handle all of the commune's like social media, we can do a podcast. <laughs> yes, because we'll communes... make some TikToks. To promote the commune. Communes are known for needing social media managers I'll, and such. You know what? I can dig a ditch. I'll just do that. That that works for me. I can clean a toilet, too. I learned that in the Navy. Ah, you do all the things. <laughs> I don't do any of the things, Dylan. All right. And that happy opening. I have a true crime story out of Greenville, South Carolina. So just a couple of hours uh, down south from us. This is so disturbing, Dylan. Oh, my God. I don't think I I've heard I'm this. I'm going to follow this case closely because I just need to know what the fuck's going on. A 17-year-old faces charges after his four-year-old half-sister was found dead behind an upstate home on Tuesday, July 19th. Oh, my God. <sighs> this kid's name is William Micah Hester, and he has been accused of kidnapping and killing Joanna Lockabee. Greenville County investigators said they believe Hester suffocated this child, causing her death. They were able to locate a plastic bin in a wooded area and unfortunately found the body of this four-year-old little girl inside. She was reported missing around 2.20 p.m. on Tuesday before her body was found in a plastic bin behind the home, which is located along Chevy Chase Boulevard, that she shared with Hester. And he admitted to suffocating the child. I don't know what to say. I mean, speaking of shit birds, right? I mean, it's really fucked up. So Hester is the stepsister of this child. 
The ma- the man that killed her? Is the 17-year-old is the stepsister ah. of this four-year-old child. Okay. Right? So his father and this little girl's mother, are they're either married or they live together. Because this is kind of a vague article. Oh, so this is his four-year-old stepsister. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. And the... I mean, this is what's even more disturbing about this. Well, I'm not going to say it's more disturbing because this is a very disturbing within itself. Yeah, this this point has been very disturbing. Family has suffered a lot of tragedy because back in 2018, the little girl, the four-year-old, her 18-month-old brother, his name was Joe Lockerbie, he was killed after being left in a hot car by the grandmother. And the mother has defended her mother at the time saying it was an accident. The, the grandmother had put this child in the car and had gone inside the house because she forgot something and had a medical emergency and like passed out. Okay. Well, I mean, that is, well, for one, I mean, you got to start the car, right? I'll start the car before I put you in the car with the air blowing. But I mean, look, if she did go inside and uh, have a medical emergency, that's, I mean, obviously beyond her control, if that's true. Is that, I mean, that doesn't, the whole putting kids in cars and leaving them or forgetting them, which I'm not saying that's what this is, I've always found that just very, very. How do you fucking forget a kid? Is I mean, that's the thing that blows my mind. I don't understand how that works. When they have campaigns telling you to put valuables, laptops, things you need for work back there by your kids so you remember them, I find that fucked up. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. I find it fucked up. Because I've tried to forget my kids for like 30 minutes just to get a peace of mind when they were growing up, and guess what? It didn't happen. I couldn't even forget about them for 30 minutes outside of a hot car. I mean, it's just a really sad story all around. This uh, young man, Hester, was taken to the Greenville County Detention Center where he um, had a bond hearing. The motive for the killing is still under investigation. Doesn't matter. At this point. Uh, (sighs) There's no good reason. There's no... Even uh, not a good reason. There is no strong reason or like, okay, I see how that happened. It's not a crime of passion. It's not... Anything like that. You suffocated a four-year-old child. You should be, if that's the truth, if that's 100% the truth, you should be shot in the square, public square, in front of everybody, including other people's four-year-olds. William Sr., the father of this young boy, was at the bond hearing and was saying, you know, he had a, his son was a, a really good boy who would not do something like this on purpose. Um, he said, quote, I know my boy, I can hold up my hand to the Lord and testify that because I know he's a good boy, never been in trouble, and he loved his sister. So def- despite the father's pleas to have mercy on this 17-year-old, a judge ruled to hold this boy without bail. How do, I'm sorry. I mean, like, if, you, what, if, you're, if she comes to get in the bed with you, is scared or something, and... Uh, you know, you're doing big brother, stepbrother thing, and, and you accidentally, I mean, how do you accidentally, saw, I don't know, how does that work? Father says, we've lost little Joanna. We we lost her. I don't want to lose my son. I'm just asking to have mercy on him. Well, where was the mercy when he suffocated this little girl and put her body in a plastic bin? Okay, see, there, Allegedly. there, there you go. There you go. Hey, there has been some kind of terrible accident, whatever. You know, I accidentally rolled over in my sleep on top of this four-year-old. I mean, I guess it could happen. You put their body in the bin. You wake up, and you're like, oh, my God. I don't know. Oh, my God, this horrible accident's happened. I have to call somebody. Oh, my God, what's happened? This is horrible. You don't put a fucking kid in a bin. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Well, you're making an assumption that he rolled over on this child. and so I mean, what are you talking about? I'm trying. What is the, I'm trying to, in my mind. Okay. I'll take you to. Because that doesn't really make sense. I'll take you to Dillantown. How this, he's acting. Because I'm like, where'd you get that? The father. There's nothing about that in the story. Is this, is you're just like. Is this my part? I guess. The father's acting like it's possibly not fucking murder. Like it's some accident. And in my mind. How do you accidentally suffocate a child? Okay. The only thing I can think of in a reasonable mind is if she, if 
You should, I don't know. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> if you accidentally like rolled over on them and they was well, in your bed Well, I don't or know something. anybody who accidentally suffocates a child and then takes that child and puts them in a plastic bin and hides them in the woods. That's my point. What the fuck is this father talking about? There is, did he killed the kid. There is no, what are you talking about? Have mercy. Well, how could you even say that? Well, I mean, I guess I can see this is your child, this is your son, and you're feeling some type of way. You're maybe in denial about what he did, but you're making excuses for your son and, and asking for mercy. And I'm sorry, but it just sounds like this boy's a fucking piece of shit. He killed a little girl. So I, I'm not going to have any mercy for him. And I feel like this dad's just, this is probably why this boy's a piece of shit because he's got parents who enable him and are like, oh, please, he's pitiful. He's crying. Okay, if they're in some kind, boy. some kind of emotional denial, full-blown, <laughs> can't deal with it, then I guess you, you, you say something like they can't do this. But I'm going to tell you right now, if one of my kids was to kill a four-year-old, um, I don't think... I'm not going to be like, have mercy on them. I'm going to be like, no, my child's exactly where he or she needs to be, behind bars. Gosh, my brain feels very dylan right now. I can tell your brain's dylan Can you? Because you just start, start like making up things that I'm like, what? My brain strives for a reason for so, or how can it even be? Because that, what the father said to, is crazy to me. Sorry. And maybe we'll get the full story. I guess the motive does need to come out, but I just don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. This child's been murdered. He would never opinion. do this on purpose, but he purposely put her in a plastic bin. That, Dad. That's when my brain took off. Like, well, if he didn't do it on purpose, how the fuck did it happen? I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop with that. Well, Kristen X is the mother of both these young children, so she has lost two children in four years. You know, you sometimes see, we've talked about generational trauma and stuff, which it just repeats itself over and over. Sometimes you see, that we've it's been in a story or two of ours, these families who've had these uh, uh, statistical anomalies, these tragedies that, you know, if one happened to you, but let alone two or three over, you know, even decades, it's very, very strange to me. Like, can one family be that unlucky? Or are they on some strange wavelength or something? I don't know. How do you deal with that? Well, I, I mean, I, I personally have experienced this type of tragedy within my own family to have sort of these back-to-back things happen that are just very tragic and unexplainable. Uh, so I don't know. Like, I, I'm not sure if it's some sort of generational curse or just some bad luck. Yeah. Wow. But um, it's a really sad story. I, I just can't fathom how the 17-year-old stepbrother, half-brother, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what his relationship is um, to this little girl. I've seen stepbrother and I've seen half-brother. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I, I just don't know. I can't fathom what could be the, the accidental reason for this death exactly. that would spark this young man to go hide the body. I right. Mean, you're going to, mean, you're going to get, I guess we, just, I guess that's the part where I, I, I don't understand. And I feel like the, the dad, it sounds like these could be people who enable and that that could be one of the reasons why this young man has, has done this. You're going to have some people say it, it could have been some type of an accident. I don't, I'm not sure. And they're going to say that they panicked after the accident, didn't know what to do. And But I cannot, could not put this poor little thing in a plastic container. Okay? I can't even talk about this anymore. That's horrible. No, it's really sad. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> Damn, son. The sun was shining on me all day, guys. I'm emotionally and physically tired right now, okay? And that is one of the most horrible things I've ever heard. No, it's terrible. And I don't know. Okay. I have no words. Wow. That's why I'm stumbling over my words. And that's uh, down there. I don't even know what to say. Down there in Greenville. In Greenville. About an hour and 40 minutes from us. We have some listeners down South Carolina way. We love South Cackalack. Greenville, downtown Greenville is wonderful. I promised. A- another West Virginia true crime story, and I'm going to deliver this week, Dylan. Man, you just got like extra stories in your back pocket and stuff. I know. <laughs> You're incredible. And can I tell our listeners how dedicated you are? Can I just right quick? 
Heather, uh, Microsoft uh, Word is just crapped on Heather, and she can't access multiple stories, hours and hours of research right now. Can't access a word of it. I hate cloud-based technology. On her Mac. When a server shits out or, oh, you got a spider oh, on your Oh, hold up, mic. guys. Hold up. Oh. Ah! Was the was the little shout necessary? It happens when I get bugs right in my face. Right. I scream like that. I, it happened at work, and uh, the guy I work with said, because this big spider came out from me. I told you about that. came out from under the phone, like, up on me, and it was, like, right by my face. And I, I screamed, like, just a little this old person. And he was like, are you okay? You know, I killed the spider and got it. And I was like, sorry, man, it's just a natural reaction. I have no control over it. It was a gangly little spider. It was a scary spider. Well, that, the one on your mic just now. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening there. It's like a gangly little thing. I didn't even want to cut the feed because I didn't want to leave y'all. Oh. So okay. I had to squash that little guy. I hate to do it. So anyway, she couldn't access it on her Mac. She's having to do this off of her phone, guys, because, and gals. She does. That's how bad she wants to make this content. She will not give up. <laughs> I just don't like cloud-based technology because when a server shits the bed, you lose it all. Yeah, I've I've not had good luck with Microsoft 365. We haven't had good luck with that fifteen hundred dollar MacBook Pro. Okay, let's be honest. So West Virginia true crime. Okay. I have an I have an old story. Back way back. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Charles Meeling was born in Germany sometime around 1845 to parents Charles and Catherine, who later immigrated to New York City around 1850. There was a mass migration to New York City during this time. In 1850, when um, the first census was actually recorded and recorded birthplaces, the leading birthplaces for residents not born in New York State were in this order, um, Ireland, Germany, and England. So you had a large influx of Irish, German, and English immigrants to New York City, uh, in particular, but to New York State. Of course, in, in that and order. through Ellis Island, yes. Okay. Makes me think we just watched Gangs of New York, like you know, not that long ago. And, I've seen and, that. And it kind of makes me think it's that time period and you have all the uh, Irish immigrants coming into New York City. I've watched that movie like seven times. Really? Completely through. <laughs> okay. So uh, the family settled in Ohio first. Charles met his wife, Matilda, and they were married in 1866. Matilda had grown up in West Virginia. The couple had four children, one daughter and three sons. Charles' parents had purchased land near Little uh, Cable Creek by the Davis Cemetery in, and I'm hoping I'm saying it right, it's either Cable or Cabell County. Probably Cabell. Is it E-L? It's C-A-B-E-L-L. I would say it's maybe Cabell. Okay, but then you know how locals will be like, uh-uh, that's, it's ca cop. that's how we say Cable he, or Cabell. Anyway. You dumbass radio host, that's a, it's Cadell. That's I'm Cabell. A, now I'm a radio host? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll say Cabell, Cable or Cabell County. You get the drift. Charles bought land near his parents in 1870 and eventually accumulated more than 200 acres from another farmer um, where he purchased and also through a bankruptcy sale. So manages to get a pretty large chunk of farmland. Okay. 200 acres. That's nothing to sneeze at, Dylan. That's 200 more than I got. Exactly. By all accounts, Charles led the life of a quiet farmer. Sometime between 1873 and 1874, Charles hired a 21-year-old man named Ed Williams as a farmhand. And Williams was said to be biracial by newspaper accounts of that time. In the two years that followed, Charles began suspecting his wife Matilda was having an affair with Ed, though he had no solid proof of the matter. So it's just an assumption or just suspected. They're making eyes at each other across the table, you know, certain certain little things popping up. He suspects. He just hasn't caught them in the act yet. He's chopping wood for her and stuff. He's he's carrying in some extra wood. <laughs> yes. He brings for her, for her cook stove. He brings extra wood to her house. I love it. Thank you for that. 
It was stated that on one occasion, he did see his wife sitting on Ed Williams' lap. Charles allegedly grabbed a shotgun, chasing after his farmhand. Now, eventually, Charles forgave his wife. After all, they had four children, and he was a farmer, and he decided, you know, he was not capable of raising these four children on his own. I mean, he was a hardworking guy. He had a lot of work to do. Right. So he, he basically needs her to get, you know, make everything work, and he's going to he's gonna forgive her yeah. and move on. You, you picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. Four hungry children and some crops in the field, you know. I mean, he's he can't do this. He's not, he's not Kenny Rogers. Now, eventually, like I said, he forgave his wife. But starting in December of 1875, Matilda and Ed conspired to murder Charles. They first attempted to poison him, actually twice, once with arsenic and another time with laudanum. Yet Charles did not die, and they realized they had given him incorrect dosages of these poisons. Uh, Certainly, and and, you know, laudanum, or is it what That was used Laudan. commonly, right? Yes. But the arsenic, I mean, it's. I'm surprised they missed the dosage on that because it's rather, it's rather, um, rather poisonous. Well, Charles did see a medical doctor by the name of Beardsley, who suggested he go to a hospital for longer, like a long term treatment because he was very ill. But Charles decided to stay at the farm with his children. Though the poison had not killed Charles, it had, as I mentioned, made him seriously ill. Matilda and Ed, feeling they couldn't wait any longer for Charles to pass away, decided to move forward with their new plan. Matilda sent her daughter Elizabeth to stay with her grandparents, hoping that the little girl wouldn't be there to witness the atrocity that was to take place. Just like get with dude and y'all leave, man. Why do you gotta do all this to poor Charles? On the evening of January 19th, Matilda sent her lover Ed Williams to take care of Charles. It has been reported that Charles saw Ed with an axe and said to his son John, Oh Lord, he's going to kill me. Get the prayer book and pray for me. And that's when Williams hit Charles several times with the axe, but he did not die right away. Matilda took a knife and decapitated her husband. They hid his body in the barn where he was buried among the animal dung wow damn dude matilda and ed continued on inside the family's home as if nothing had happened they cleaned up the mess and would later report charles was missing a few days um, later when neighbors started inquiring about his absence the family attended a church meeting and when this happened ed let some horses into the stables hoping it would appear as though charles had been trampled by the horses and that's how he was killed Ah, so he turns the horses out where the bodies is already hidden, and basically, okay. Which is stupid because Matilda's already decapitated him. So what are we going to say? The horse cut his head off. I him, mean, that doesn't make any sense. Them horses done stomped his head clean off. Matilda warned her son John that she would kill him if he told anyone what had happened to his father. After some days, Matilda and Ed began telling conflicting stories when people would ask about Charles. Matilda seemed unbothered by her husband's disappearance, and her farmhand was now living with her inside the home. And this, of course, aroused suspicion. By January 22nd, Charles' brother-in-law went to the sheriff with the theory that murder was afoot. When the sheriff arrested Matilda and Ed, they went along without a fuss, but claimed they knew nothing they didn't know where Charles was. They hadn't seen him. He had done runt off, right? <laughs> wow, these uh, this is poor planning. You didn't even get your story together. And uh, you don't move into that big house with her, right? You sneak around, come by the midnight lamp. I just made that up, I think. That's like a new phrase I you, just made. You, you come by the midnight lamp. <sighs> now you're going to don't do like that. That's when you, you enter the home. And you pass the midnight lamp that's burning. He was entering something, okay? The home, perhaps, yes. But it seems like he was entering something else. So you're doing all these things that's going to make people suspicious. So, they're, I mean, they're just doing, they're hitting all the, checking all the boxes. And I wish I had more information about this murder, but this, I, I gathered this from old newspaper articles, Dylan. So I don't have a ton of information about uh, what exactly transpired here. Now, Ed Williams said that Charles had left Matilda with no intention of coming back. So on their way to Barbersville, 
where they would be jailed. Matilda was quite nervous, but Ed was joking with the officers and seemed cool and collected until he finally arrived at the jail cell. And that's when he began sobbing like a big old baby. Uh, yeah, something about the clank of that heavy iron, right? Nobody wants to go to jail. No. An investigation of the home revealed marks on the floorboards of the house that were more than grease. So they knew that this is some blood stains, and we have some axe marks, and this is all adding up to a big old messy murder. That was like Frankie Silver, right? Yeah. The family's dog was tied up and howling. Now, the deputies and the sheriff decided to cut the dog loose and see where he went. And the dog led the men directly to the barn, where under a pile of corn stalks and manure, they found the body of Charles. The community was outraged. Residents gathered rope and headed for the jail. The mob cried from outside the jail, Hang the demons! Burn them at the stake! <laughs> yeah, so... So got a, a good old-fashioned lynching. A good, yeah. Vigilante justice. Mountain justice, Dylan. Williams, hearing the mob outside, asked to be taken into Matilda's cell, and this was granted. A reverend named George Young joined the prosecutor inside the jail, um, inside the cell, actually, offering to pray with Ed Williams. He insisted that the couple confess, so the pair began by denying everything. Ed Williams then said he had murdered Charles over a three-year-old cult mare. Oh, that makes total sense. We had sense. a big dispute over a three-year-old horse. She's two and a half. Uh-uh, Charles, she's three. I'm telling you, look at her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you some bitch, I done say she's three. But the mob outside was growing louder, and Williams grew more nervous and finally started admitting what had really happened. Matilda confessed that she had been the cause of the murder and had urged Ed to do her bidding. The details of the confessions were relayed to the crowd. So as the reverend departs the jail, the mob pushes past the deputies and they force their way inside. Which I'm curious about how this old jail was laid out. And so you've got somebody like relaying. He's in there confessing to the crowd. <laughs> Somebody's I mean, like looking this? in the window listening. Yeah, it's like a game of telephone. So they're like, hurry up and get him before he's allowed to confess his sins. So they rush in, and they pluck Williams from his knees, where he's now praying. The mob dragged him to the front of the county courthouse, where a rope had been tied to a tree branch with a barrel acting as a scaffold. A noose was tied around Williams' neck, while the reverend and the prosecutor begged the crowd to cease the lynching. Though the sheriff tried to hold the barrel steady to keep Williams from hanging, someone pushed it out from under the man. It took about 15 minutes before Ed Williams died. Matilda was then brought out from the cell to look at her lover's body hanging from a tree. She lied, saying she was pregnant, probably so she would not undergo the same fate, but she was forced to touch his corpse. They were like, touch your dead lover, you harlot. Touch his leg. Yeah. Now, and, you know what's terrible about this? And then they took her back to her cell. You know, he didn't have the drop that breaks your neck. He just like... He's just like, sw he's just a swing in. Yeah, they just barely pushed the barrel out from under. He was just dangled there. Wow. That's wild. Just a swing in. Like the song? Like John Anderson sang about. He's just a swing in. Okay. So they make her touch this guy's dead body, and then they put her back in the cell. The mob loitered for a few more hours, daring anyone to remove the body of Ed Williams. They wanted it to hang there? Yeah. Okay. Don't you touch his body. I know they was passing jugs around a white liquor. He's just a swinging. Okay. In the early morning hours, law enforcement covered the body in a white muslin cloth, and then it was later taken down. He was buried at Kyle Cemetery. Matilda was indicted for murder, and on March 7th, her trial began. She was appointed two attorneys after declaring she had no money to hire one. In a one-day trial, Matilda was found guilty of murder and ordered to prison at Moundsville. Same place where Charles Manson's mama was locked up. Oh, wow. Interesting connection. In 1882, she died of consumption. 
Is that is that alcohol? Have I asked this before? Is that strictly alcohol? Is that just any? It's tuberculosis. Ah, this is gets me it's every the consumptions, time. bro. It consumed your lungs. Is that what we're gonna well, think? They, I suppose they called it the consumption, but it was ter- it was TB. It was tuberculosis. That's what I do every time. Every time I cross up tuberculosis, the consumption, as it was well known throughout history, um, with uh, like you're using drugs or alcohol. I mean, alcohol. you're okay. Here, here's my question, Dylan. What? I, I just don't get how your brain works sometimes. Mm, me neither. So we're talking about consumption, and and your automatic thought is that she was consuming alcohol and died. Yeah. She's in prison, bro. Was she making toilet wine? Yeah, she's making trash can hooch, bro. In 1882. But they've been fermenting fruit since the beginning of time, Heather. In the prison. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you, yeah. Why not? They're somebody that you know they're janking right now. That's where they're putting their poo in a pot. With like a bag over it and huffing the methane coming out off of it. Right now in a prison somewhere, they're janking. You think Matilda in 1882 was janking at the prison? What, in the outhouse? Dude, no. Over a chamber pot? Nobody. I mean, I'm just curious. Yeah, see, there you go. How's your brain work? They have chamber pots there. There's no indoor plumbing. So there is a pre-made jank hole. (laughs) Right? And uh, you know what? No one controls your poo. Your excrement and your urine. So according to Dylan, you. in 1882 at Moundsville and, and just across the USA in these old prisons, people are just getting fucked up and drunk as hell and dying. Just dying, right? Yep. Just, they consumed too much and died. Off chamber pot wine and oh janking. Gosh. Y'all, do you see what I do? <laughs> <laughs> hey, or it, you know what? It could have been the tuberculosis. No one's sure what got her. She was a jankhead. That that's in the books. That's in the oral history of this story. Actually, it is passed from. Is generation. it really called j- janking? I'm pretty sure that's what it was. That's it's huffing the methane off of your own poo, and fermented urine. Ah, uh, just is that, is that a thing? I don't want to get high that bad. I'm gonna tell you right now. And I have been known to enjoy getting high, <laughs> not off my poo. I mean, when something's like stupid or you know poorly constructed i might be like that's janky but i've never heard that's you that you were janking i didn't know that janking was a thing i could be saying the term wrong but i'm pretty sure it's burned seared into my mind is that because it was one of the most grossest should wait i shouldn't put most with grossest it's one of the grossest things i've ever heard (laughs) thank you for sharing you're welcome yeah you're getting the special sauce today folks it really is Okay, well, that has been a brief tale of true crime in West Virginia back in the 1800s. That's how they do it. I'm going to cut off somebody's head and then be like, oh, the horse killed him. And But <laughs> but, it was, it was, but then they didn't even like report it as an accident. They just left the body out there for like how whatever it was, days or weeks, like just marinating in, in this poor guy who's been murdered. And his body's being desecrated and just marinating in like the manure and corn stalks with a bunch of horses like in and out and just hoping someone like might find them. Be like, oh, it's been some kind of terrible beheading by horse, you know? I mean, what is wrong with those people? It's not too bright. I mean, if it sounds like it went down like that, that's the reports. If it really went down like that, I don't feel get bad that guy got hung. Should have just stuck to the poisoning. Man, I tell you what. They or maybe need... Ed and Matilda should have just hit the road. I will give them one thing back then. They knew what to do with someone who would suffocate a four-year-old. There's a lot of axe murdering back then. Hang them in front of the courthouse and dare somebody to take the damn body down. Leave them there for the crows. Do you believe if public execution were a thing again? Yeah. Like we went down to the hanging square and took a picnic and made a day of it. That would deter crime? Or do you think not really? You'd still have the same. Of course, now we live in a system where it'd be like 50 years before they actually executed the person if they even did. Right. So. No, it has to be. uh, This type of swift justice is uh, dangerous because innocent people get caught up in it, right? Yes. And it's just what the mob thinks. It's not what the mob actually knows typically. And uh, that so that could go sideways so bad. But no, um, I don't know. 
I don't know if uh, if you could do it and no innocent people were ever killed like that, which is unlikely, statistically unlikely. Um, if you knew if I do this and I get caught, I'm going to be dead in a week and left to rot on like a a, a, a pike or a, a outside of the castle wall, your head or some shit. Maybe you think twice. What do you think? Yeah, I don't I don't want to die by hanging. I don't I don't want to be executed by hanging. Okay, so uh, we all know about I'm sure at this point a lot of us true crime fans and if you listen to Mountain Murders, you had a uh, a very convoluted report uh, on this from Dale, yours truly. Um so they, you know, lethal injection drugs are hard to find and they're bringing back other, um, we discussed this the in firing dis- squad. Yeah, they're bringing back. We discussed this in our Discord chat. Uh, firing squad. They're bringing back. You know, fire up the electric chairs. These other methods. Um, which one would you pick? Hanging, fire squad, electric chair, or to be um, locked in a box and starved to death? I'm coming up with that one for people who hurt children. What about the guillotine? I would take the the guillotine. It's clean. Except, you know what? People who harm children get the dull blade. And it just, like, smashes your neck. And we have to do it, like, a hundred times. I, sup- I mean, do I have to pick? I'd rather not get the death penalty. I'd rather not commit a crime that's going to get me the death penalty, Dylan. But if I have to choose and I can't have drugs, i maybe go with the firing squad. Because that seems like a quick death. Firing right. squad, it seems pretty clean. The guillotine's clean. Very scary to get your neck in there. It's going to be a lot of anxiety. Maybe they can at least give you some Valium or something. Yeah, well, that's my thought with the firing squad is, you know, can they can they give me a little something? Can I just get a sedative? This is fascinating. I think this is like a question you could find out something about people if you ask them that. We're going to give everybody out there some homework. Ask the people you know. If you can't get lethal injection, which other... Method and I love Heather. I love you because you're just you brought the guillotine. I didn't even think about it. like why is nobody advocating that we bring that back? The modern, sleek, all stainless, you know, just perfectly weighted. It's actually reaching like terminal velocity when it drops. Drop it from like whatever twelve stories. Everything's greased up and properly lubed, and just whack right just the cleanest cut through your neck ever. Why not the drunken executioner tra- travel ex- ex- executioner that travels from town to town and he's hated by all? Remember him? Would you let him do cut your head off? I would apply for that job, actually. Oh my God, you'd be perfect. Yeah, well, I don't like people anyway. I know. So it'd be perfect for me, right? Because I'm already antisocial. So if I could just go to town to town, people like hated me, that'd be great. <laughs> they stay away like, from me. Stay you? away from me. Oh my God, right? they, you'd have the cutest little axe. It would just be a little axe, but it's a very... No, I have a guillotine. I don't need an axe. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about the axe executioner who travels with the Black Hood in medieval times. Well, I just want to drop the blade, okay? Because it just seems like not a hard job, okay? I don't have to be in good shape. <laughs> just hit the button. But I get like a, a badass like black, you know, like a mask and maybe like a cool apron, right? Okay. I, I don't have to probably adhere to any... um. Uniform standards? Likely not. You're, right? You're so, like, my yellow, my bright yellow mohawk's probably going to be acceptable. No, it's going to actually be uh, preferable. Okay. See? I know, right? Because people would know that you you have come to town and you're here to do uh, the devil's work. Yeah. They'd right? be like, this this weird old lady. Little. This uh, this weird little old lady. Little short old lady. She, she shows up looking like a character out of Mad Max. You're not right? old, though. Well, I mean, I kind of am. And she's, got on, her, times you would she's be. got on her black leather outfit, right? Okay, with some fabulous boots. And she, of course, okay? right? Because I, I do love a good pair of boots, some chunky goth boots. And she's just here to do the guillotine shit, right? So I'm, I'm good with that. Hire me. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> in this apocalyptic world we're about to be in, um, maybe that, maybe they'll hire me. Okay, enough. Of that, Dylan. So you can be, uh, you can run the commune, social media, all everything. You can actually create and uh, run and the podcast for the so uh, commune, which is very I common. Can do the executioner's podcast. Jeez, oh, whoa, shut up! We got a patent that. Gosh, and you could just act like an old black. I'm here to kill you. 
Yeah, oh, they don't want to hear us talk like that. I'll be like, look, guys, I know it's a stressful day at work today, okay? Yeah, I had to kill five shitbirds. They were a couple billionaires, you know, chop off their heads. And every single one of them shit themselves. They did, you know? And, and it's a smelly job, but somebody's going to do it. Five billionaires? Yeah. You're going to kill the father of a hundred children, Elon Musk? Eat the, I'm going to eat the rich, <laughs> yes. Oh off with their God. heads. If you cut Jeff Bezos' head off, I think it would be green blood. Just saying. I think he's a reptile. I think he is. I think man. the Zook and the Bezos are both reptilians. He's got, well, Elon Musk, bro. I mean, when he looks straight at you. Have you seen his recent beach photos? No, I'm not but trying I trying to body shame anybody, but that is the fucking whitest person I've ever seen. Ah, oh, come. Well, I mean, you know, maybe he likes it pasty, bro. God, he's really. Pa- how do you. How, how you on a Grecian yacht, you know, ocean, an ocean tour on And you don't a, tan. Yeah. Any at all. And you're like the whitest person. You're so white, you're translucent. Wait a second. Does he have like farmer's tan thing going on? Or is he just white all over? He's so white. And look, I'm fucking pasty. I'm very fair skinned. But this dude, it's uh, it's unnatural how white he is. (laughs) This motherfucker like powder out in the sunshine in the Mediterranean. You know what's funny is um, Musk is quite the character, obviously. Uh, Doesn't also, he have a kid named like R R T R two D two or some shit? X Y seven nine or something like that. I mean, come on. I mean, what are these people doing at a certain point? I thought they were going off the rails when they started naming kids like I'm gonna name my kid Cher. It's this different. Is, this is yogurt. Oh, this is a- Apple over there and her cousin Plum. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're so cool. That anyway, kid's Plum ugly. So you know, and he's in some. Sometimes I'm like, wow, that guy's kind of like a semi visionary. You know, he thinks big and all this. But then when you dig into it, he didn't create Tesla. He bought in for six point three million or so, and then took over the company. He didn't create Pi- PayPal, which is where which was a whole another company before. He didn't create that either. But he had a stake, and when they did find, they actually kicked him out. And but when he they did sell, he had like a stake, so he got a hundred eighty mil or whatever. And it's like, he's not as quiet. Maybe he's just a good strategist, strategist, business guy or whatever, but he didn't actually make these things. I don't really care about Elon Musk. I don't give a fuck. I mean, he just, he's like gross and lizardy and pasty to me. He's lizardy too. Yeah. yeah. Um, You're right, he is. And just so fucking white, man. (laughs) Anywho. Why are any billionaires like sexy and handsome or, I mean, I don't know. You don't, they don't roll out the women billionaires. There's got to be some. But why are they all gross? Huh? I don't know. Epstein was a gross. So gross. I guess they have to overcompensate for just being grody. And why are they adding like Ghislaine Maxwell? Uh, thank you, last podcast on the left for that. Um, was only getting trafficking or influencing girls for just Epstein personally. That's how they're portraying this. She was getting them so Epstein could use them in whatever way or do whatever his sick shit and provide them for all his buds and use other people and blackmail other people and all that shit. And there's just no talk about it. Okay? How about there's no talk about any of the men who tr- who participated in the assault of these young women. The ones that are basically why is, known. Why is why do we not have a fucking list that has been released? You know why? Because the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial was going on, right? Gosh, I'm off the rails now. I can't even. And we just watched a disturbing video on TikTok together. I had to show Heather. This is we're have, this is such an ADD podcast. Ellen. We're just <laughs> all over the fucking place. It's okay. It's a midweek. Um, we're just glad to get it out, guys. It's so tough right now. Um, or y'all. I'm going to start saying y'all. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's all inclusive. And uh, so... Uh, yeah, I'll just s- like the Golden Corral. Now go ahead. <laughs> I saw a video of this woman, and she seemed to apparently be uh, t- attempting to get this little girl... Um, it appeared to be um, somewhere down south from America. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, there there was a bag of food or, you know, I don't know. It, kind it was of like remi- a food stand. It looked like a, a bag of grain, like maybe rice or something. And it did have uh, Spanish writing on okay. it. Okay. So, right? so it has to be somewhere. Some yeah. Hispanic country, I'm right. assuming. And uh, this strange woman in sunglasses approaches this little girl and, like, rubs her ponytail and touches her on her back. And the little girl looks at her like, why are you touching me like this? Yes. A little girl, eight, maybe nine. 
And uh, then all of a sudden, there's this car shows up. It's sitting right there on the street by this stand. And uh, the, the lady's door- on her phone, almost like she's texting somebody. The like, doors yeah, the- open. The car's yeah, running. Very weird. The vendor comes out from behind the uh, counter and literally puts her arm around the little girl and steers her to the right away from these people and down the street. And that woman runs and jumps in the car and they take off. It was so obvious. We're, I'm going to try to get Heather to put it on our social medias. Um, so you can catch it. I will put it on Instagram. And it was a it was an attempt at trafficking. They were going to kidnap this little girl and do God knows what to her. And we we don't fight this together worldwide. All governments, all people, right? No. I can't even start right now, but like I give a fuck about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, right? But the little, there's little kids, thousands, tens of thousands, probably worldwide right now. I did listen to abused. a podcast. Um, it is called, I'll have to look it up. It's like Conspiracy Theories and Unexplained. Isaac, what's his face? I think it's Wazoff. Yeah. I hope I'm Cons- saying it right. Yeah. Conspiracy Theories and Unpopular s- Culture. Isaac Weishaupt. I think that, yeah, yeah, I love that guy. Right. So I've been listening to that a little bit here and there. And there was a recent episode, it dropped this week, on Johnny Depp's Illuminati symbolism, friends, vampires, and the occult. I had to listen to this. And, I mean, you can always draw these you know, parallels and conclusions based on, well, this and that and this. But once you listen to the episode, I was like, huh, I mean... He has some interesting points. I mean, if you're looking for something, you're going to find it. Yes, you know, if it's exactly. in numbers, if it's in whatever, whatever, you're going to find it because you're, you're going to discount information that doesn't support your theory. You're going to, you know, magnify information that does. Um, but I mean, dude, once he goes all the way around in this episode of this, a very good episode of this uh, podcast, I'm just like, OK, because we're talking about some very strange connections, very strange connections. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yes. He even has a vampire room, which I'm jealous of. I want a vampire room. Johnny Depp has a vampire room where he goes and meditates, where he drinks his mega pints. I want a vampire. No, I want like a, I want like a mortuary room, right? And I can meditate in a coffin. Oh. And be surrounded by beautiful fake floral arrangements. Would you lay in a coffin? Yeah. You would? Yeah, but I wouldn't want the lid on. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> well, I'm a little claustrophobic. You want an open-air coffin? I want an open-air coffin. Okay. Okay? Yeah, this totally fits in with the episode. But like beautiful satin lined, right? I want a proper coffin for Com- a proper body. Comfortable. I want it to be a pine box, bro, Old West style. And um, I, I want to be surrounded by beautiful flake flowers. I love funeral arrangements. <laughs> you do. She has a funeral arrangement under our table in the living room. I don't know. Where'd you get that from? I you, you would never. Look, I just got it, okay? You would never. No. No, I bought it. You didn't take it off of a grave? No, Dylan. Thank God. No. You piece of shit. I would have called you. <laughs> Thanks. No, I bought it. <laughs> I just don't have to explain myself to you. This was a Goodwill? A funeral arrangement? I didn't say it was a Goodwill. I bought it new. Interesting. Yeah. So why don't you suck on my funeral flowers, okay? <laughs> okay. Damn. All right. Hey, what I do like we... like these accusations. I, you're getting defensive now. I think maybe you bought it on the black market. Maybe I did. Oh, my God. Maybe I bought it from your mama. <laughs> don't you talk about my mom <laughs> like that, you son of a bitch. All right. Time to wrap things up, Oh, fuck my mama. My mama ain't no bitch. I hate people like that. If you call them a motherfucker, they say, I don't fuck my mama. You don't take that back. Uh, okay. Or if you call them a son of a bitch, they say, my mama ain't no bitch. You take that back. I'm like, wow, you're a low-functioning, low-intelligence person. But she is. At least my mama is. Okay, let's oh, wrap Oh, I thought up. you were saying my mama was. Well, I just said I got it. Maybe I bought it from your mama. You like my mama, though. <laughs> well, I know. Maybe she's awesome and sold me a funeral arrangement. God damn, Dylan. <laughs> oh, okay, you said GD. Time Stop. to wrap this up. I know. You're pushing my buttons. Let's wrap it up. All right, let's wrap it up like a daggum prophylactic. Bye.